Hello and welcome back. Okay, of late I've been reminiscing a bit about my old family computer, which was a Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus. Now you might be more familiar with the regular Spectrum, but the Plus just had a nicer keyboard and a reset button. But I've been keeping an eye out on eBay and I've snapped one up in an auction. So uh, let's un unbox it and take a look. I'm hoping that this is uh, what I think it is. It is almost certainly not a travel washing line. So this is a ZX Spectrum Plus. Now I'm hoping it works or at least it's something that we can repair. But this is essentially the very first computer I ever owned. I did have opportunity to do some work on other computers beforehand, but this was the, the family computer when I was uh, young. This particular one has come as seen. It was a part of a house clearance, so they say they weren't able to test it. Okay, so this is a joystick interface. Now this is already really cool because I never owned anything that would plug into the expansion port. So basic edge connector at the back. Now this is just a joystick, but there are a couple of different standards of joystick connector, and I don't know which one this is. This doesn't quite cover all the pins as well. This is a UHF cable, so this would plug into the back of the TV. Now, I don't have any TV with an old style analog tuner on it. So cross that bridge. This is the original Sinclair power brick. Or is it? Might be a clone actually. This might just work or it might need some effort or it might be a total waste of money. I suppose you just plug this in. Okay, it says 13 volts. It's supposed to be a 9 volt power supply. All right, we need to open this up one way or another. Everything's in here. I think that's a column that's bit broken off. Okay, well I've just read online that the output from these is expected to be between 10 and 13 volts. It's the output from the regulator down here that really matters, so that gives me confidence to try powering it up. And what we're really interested in is the output from here being a nice stable 5 volts. Okay, now this connector's got a bit of wobble on it. That looks like dodgy solder joints. I'm always suspicious when people sell stuff solder seen, but there's a problem and that's just their way of getting away from it. So before I do anything else, I'm going to reflow those solder joints. You see the dodgy joints there? Looks like only one of them is actually holding it in place. Let's take a risk. I believe that's the output. And we've got five volts. That's 4.8 volts over there at the modulator. Now, good news is I'm not seeing any signs on this board that anyone's worked on it. Well, no obvious signs anyway. Only the ULA is socketed. I think that's normal. CPU's warming up slightly. Now, I was kind of hoping we'd see something that looked like a video signal coming out of here. Actually, no, that's 
current. That's that's video, and that looks like video. Actually, looks like frame data. Okay, so I need a way of displaying this. I said when I was a kid, I had one of these, and it was the same as this. You had a, a UHF output that you put into your TV and then you tune the TV to the right channel and it would display. So the only place in the house I could use it was in the living room in front of the family TV. And at one point I was given a composite monitor and I had hopes that maybe I could plug the spectrum into that and use it to uh, display the output. It was only green screen, but uh, I couldn't get it to work. But what I know now that I didn't know then is that this little box here is called a modulator. And what that does is that turns a composite signal, modulates it to a carrier and produces a UHF signal that the TV tuner can pick up. But actually right here that we just saw on the scope is a signal that that composite monitor should have been able to interpret. So because nobody has UHF TVs anymore, apart from the, the, the true affectionados of uh, retro hardware who have uh, CRT televisions lying around. I'm going to see if I can take the top off this can. Oh, that's interesting. See that? That resistor is already loose. It's actually floating. I'm wondering if maybe someone's attempted a composite monitor mod on this already. So we need the center pin here disconnected, but it already has been. And to avoid it causing a problem, we want to disconnect the five volt line here. Also going to disconnect this composite signal. Now in theory, connecting the signal pin direct to here, but most people recommend doing that via a capacitor. Difficult to know the right order to do this in. Trying to guess how much wire I need to get through this hole. Okay, I am still slightly perturbed by this resistor. I think maybe this is actually just knocked loose. I think what I'm gonna do is try and put this little bit of shrink wrap on it. And that will convince me that it's not about to ruin my day with the signal output. So in theory, this is now a composite out. And this has a composite input. I don't actually know what goes to the composite. Ah, copyright 1982 Sinclair Research. That is a sight for sore eyes. Now I'm pretty confident we actually fixed a couple of issues here that would have prevented this from working. So it's possible that 
This was described as sold as seen because they tested it and it didn't work. I'm not going to accuse anyone of that, but it's uh, it's not uncommon, or at least um, possibly someone upstream from the person who sold it to me. Okay, I'm going to try and reassemble this back into the case a bit because we currently have no keyboard. And these springs were made of plastic. I'm amazed they've survived. I don't know where that comes from. Oh, there we go. Just a column there. I'll need to glue that at some point. I'm going to reattach it like that though, just so I don't lose the bits of a screw. Now, these keyboards can be a bit touchy. The kind of carbon membrane construction is uh, it's not the most reliable thing in the world. Which I won't put screws back in it just yet. Now, when I was young, I got very used to the way this keyboard was laid out, but there are things about it that are uh, not very common. Now, one of the really strange things about Sinclair Basic that um, other users of other platforms wouldn't be used to is that they had whole words on the keyboard. And this was actually down to the way it was encoded. So it wasn't a text parser for the basic language, is it would actually store line numbers and then symbols for the commands. So let's see if I can remember enough of this. So I just push the P button and print comes up. And one thing that as kids we would do is go into the supermarkets and the tech shops in the local shopping center and uh, write little mini programs. Okay, it looks like that key. Yes, yeah, so we've got, have got some non-functioning keys. Five in a row there. Those work. Oh, that's disappointing. I can't write my name without those. Let's see if we can uh, look into that. There's a couple of possibilities. Contact here could be dodge. The carbon here could be broken, but the fact that it's one kind of row segment suggests not. Or it could be the diode here is broken. Now the membranes are actually uh, quite common to find online. So if I can't get anything else, I can always just buy a new one. Might just be a dodgy contact. Right, so I believe this covers a row of five lines. So at the far end here, we get that. Next row, we should get that. And the one after, we should get that. Okay, so the contacts here on the keyboard are working. Could be just the physical connection, could be the diode. Okay, so I've just got a little IPA wipe. That's working. I'm sure those ones were working earlier. I think maybe getting a new membrane when I can was a good idea. Yeah, you get the symbols with symbol shift, not cap shift. It's going to take some time getting used to this again. That's awesome. I actually got some kind of a game with this. Though I don't have a tape player. I suspect I can probably actually um, 
download games and uh, output sound from the sound card. I have to give that a go. But no, I am incredibly happy with that. This appears to work. Um, it's probably a little bit flaky, but I think a lot of hardware this age is probably a bit dodge. But um, yeah, that works. Now, I guess some of you are probably wondering why I have this. Partially it's just nostalgia. But I'm also kind of curious about the uh, edge connector at the back. When I was a kid, I was fascinated by what this could be. And of course now, through the whole kind of CPU build process, I've got a pretty robust knowledge of the kind of signals that are going to be going across these connectors. So I maybe want to have a go at um, making some interfaces for this thing. Something I could never have dreamed of doing when I was younger. So um, you know, if people want to see that, I'm uh, more than happy to make a, a couple of videos of my uh, experimentation. Don't worry, I'm not going to get distracted from the main CPU builds. Now these are labelled mic and ear and I don't know which way round they are. These colours look familiar. Ha, oh, that's cool. This is great. I can't remember the controls for this. How does this joystick work? No, that doesn't necessarily mean anything because um, not all games supported all joysticks. Okay, I'm very pleased we got that working. I did have my doubts for a minute there. So one of the key things that I want to look at in this is playing around with the expansion port and getting an understanding of how everything works and connects up. And I think there's gonna be an opportunity there to talk about and demonstrate some of the differences in the way processors handle signals from the way I've done it in my CPU build. But my first step is going to be Next time I'm ordering some PCBs, I'll quickly design up a breakout board for the expansion slot. And then when, once I've got that, we'll have a probe around with the oscilloscope and get an idea for how the signals work. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found it interesting and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.